everyone and today we will be discussing A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. As you could see we don't have it in physical form but I'll give you a nice picture of the digital copy. Anyways, let's talk about this amazing book. So this is not new news, everybody knows this, but the books are based off of Beauty and the Beast. It's kind of like a high fantasy version of Beauty and the Beast. And one thing I thought that was like really cool is just some of the parallels and how the author kind of switched them. For example, Fyra, Fyra, Fyra. They put that pronunciation guide in the back of the book for people like me who can't pronounce things to save their life. So I can't do it. So when I pronounce half these names wrong, please forgive me. Fyra, we're gonna call her Fyra, okay? We're, okay, we're just we're just gonna call her Fyra. She can't read, doesn't know how to write, just can't really read. Where in Beauty and the Beast, the Beast could not read, and so Belle had to teach him. And kind of Tamlin offered to teach her, but she's kind of like really private, like no, you're not teaching me. So it's like parallel to Beauty and the Beast, and I love Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorites. Disney movies, I might say my second. My first is always Ariel, because you know, the red hair. We redheads have to stick together, you know? But probably I would have to say that Beauty and the Beast is like my second favorite Disney movie. I just love Beauty and the Beast. I was even in a show in high school of Beauty and the Beast, and I was a talent person and a spoon in Be All Guests. It was, it was great. So, Vera goes out into the woods to capture this one creature. So, this creature could tell her the truth of Tamlin and why he is what he is and what she should do. And the way that Sarah J. Moss described this character really made me think of Smeagol. I don't know why, but I, I just pictured Smeagol from the Lord of the Rings series. It's kind of funny, like the author is trying to confuse us. In the Throne of Glass series, it is said that iron harms the Fae. Where in A Court of Roses, they say iron does not harm them and it's just an old legend. So which is it, people? Like, the author is trying to confuse us here. But where in Beauty and the Beast, Belle likes to read, Farrah likes to paint. And so in Beauty and the Beast, when the Beast showed this library, she's like, oh my gosh, a beautiful library. Where in A Court of Thorns and Roses, Hamlin shows her this art gallery. She's like, oh, art gallery, I love art, and stuff like that. So it's like parallels and they're changing. It's one thing that's really interesting about this book is that the author takes a totally classic story and makes it new. Like, even the parallels are changing to be original. Like, I knew someone was up with her sister Nesta. Like, she went I returned home and Nesta's kind of like staying back. I knew something was with Nesta. At first I thought maybe she was like, a bad person. Like, haha, I'm gonna betray you. But turns out she actually can see past this glamour. And, and we find out that Nesta actually cares much more about Farrah than she ever let on. And it was actually Nesta who kind of encouraged her to go back like, hey, you don't really have a life here. You have your life over there. When that evil dude came to the manor and he asked Farrah her name, she's like, he's like, tell me your name. And she gave this fake name and I knew it was going to catch up with her. I don't know why she just did not make up some name or would that like get her caught. But she came up with a name and thinking, oh, you know, it's just going to be harmless. No, the person ended up dying a really brutal death. So it just made up a name, like a random name, like the top of your head. Like, I don't know, take two names, you know, and put them together and there you go. You have your fake name. I like the curse. The curse was interesting. It was it was tricky too. Fire, she kind of knew about the curse, but she didn't because they couldn't tell her about the curse. But she knew there was something going on because they couldn't tell her about the curse. She had to figure out herself, which made the story so much more trickier because it all depend on whether or not she would fall in love with Tamlin. And so many times, Tamlin gave her an opportunity to say that she loves him and she just didn't because she's too prideful or she just didn't want to and so, oh my gosh like because obviously we know Vera loves Tamlin but she just didn't want to say it and the curse is like really interesting then because then we find out this whole tree thing was all made up as a disguise maybe something that I wasn't there before when Farrah first starts out, she keeps saying, am I going to be here forever? And I don't know if you've seen the Being the Beast Broadway show or you heard of it. There's this one song called Home. One of the lines is, will I stay here forever held in this empty space? Like, the song literally describes Farrah's situation. It's just, it's, it's so good. It's just, this book is so good. With Farrah's fake name, now we know why. With that girl's name that she used, whose house burned down and she got taken and killed, it was because so the curse could not be broken, so the curse could stay the curse, so there was no chance in the world it could ever be broken. Lucy, I don't know how to pronounce this, the fox face guy. When Pharaoh was leaving, he kept saying, give her a few more days, give her a few more days, and he was mad when she left. 
And I was like, why? Why do you want a few more days? Then we find out because, like I said, the curse was going to be broken a few more days, but Tam will let her go early, which I think is an act of, like, true love because he knew that she probably would not tell him that she loves him or he didn't want to risk it and he didn't want to put her in danger when he knew that they would come for him. We meet this one queen girl and she's all like, Oh, I let Precious Tom go if you do these tasks or if you solve my riddle. Well, Farah ends up doing these tasks, but she ends up making a blood alliance with someone else, which you would think his character I was not really sure on because he's like, a woman, he's like really mean, but then he can show a little niceness. So I'm, I'm thinking he's going to turn out to be maybe a better guy. I think he is. Then we find we really meet Lucian a lot or the fox face guy because I don't know how to pronounce any of these names. And we find out that he's actually, I don't think he's that bad of a guy. And then Verify completes all these tasks and the queen's like, oh, no, we're not. I'm not honoring it. You're just, you're just done. We're not, we're not doing that. There was a loophole I never said what I had to, which I thought about that. When this queen first offered these um, tasks, in exchange for the freedom she never said when she would free them so i kind of figured that it was gonna happen but then i finally figures out her riddle and so a lot of stuff happens then after that and like fair ends up dying but then i love the scene they end up making her fight and it was it was great and now so now she's like Faye with talent and they're gonna live happily ever after at least till the second book comes out and then it's all gonna go down right now we're gonna imagine they're gonna live it happily ever after anyways that's my review i'd probably give this book a 3.5 maybe four stars out of five thank you for watching bye